Hey guys, thanks for clicking. I appreciate that. So today, well, <laughs> we were, um, let me fix this camera, sorry. We were on a job for a very short amount of time and we had a little situation with our new tractor. Um, I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna show you the code we got. To, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> a John Deere stop code, um, EGR, something to do with the emissions. You know, I'm really excited about having emissions because you know I want to save the world, but I don't know how necessary it is on these little tractors. But it seems to be that we're gonna learn about why we have this code because I have looked everywhere on the internet for this particular model tractor and uh, for this code and I haven't found anything. So that's why I'm making the video. Let me flip it around and show you the code. Hang on. As soon as I figure that out. All right, and like I said, so now we're back. We had to take the machine. Luckily, we were able to still drive it, remove it from the job, bring it back to the shop, and we have to diagnose and figure out what, what this thing means. Let's see. Let's see if I get a better view on this here. EGR gas temp sensor fault. And that gave us the John Deere what they call the stop code emergency shut the machine down type of thing otherwise you will do damage to it so that's our code and that's the stop code let's see sorry about all that fancy camera work today here's the machine back in the shop we have it uh, we got the covers off here there's this big beautiful emissions thing that they put on top here now, I believe, I am not sure, because I am learning this myself. This is the first diesel I've ever owned, but I know these EGR things. So, I believe this is the sensor. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it is. I don't know if it's a situation where it needs to be cleaned or what. From what I read, it says that the some kind of buildup of soot or something can cause the gas temperature to go up. I don't know. And before you ask any of those questions, let me flip it around. Before you ask me those questions, do I let the machine run when it's time for it to run? Yes. I've never shut it down in the middle of a, a cleaning cycle or whatever they call that fancy name. I'm not sure. Um, So like I said, I, I always let the machine do what it needs to do. I've never shut it off in the middle of the, um, the clean out. And I did also try a manual burn and the computer won't let it happen because that code's on. Uh, so we're gonna go to the next step there. First thing we're gonna do is pull the sensor out, check the EGR valve and see if, I don't know if it's dirty or if it needs to be cleaned. We'll try rebooting the battery and um, we'll see what that does. Okay, so I believe, I believe this is the sensor. Please, if anyone knows more about this than me, which would be pretty much anyone, because this is my first diesel I've ever owned. I believe this is the sensor, and a lot of times these sensors get real dirty, and that can cause a bad reading. I don't know. So here it is. It's got a lot of crud on there. Definitely slimy. Could be the problem. Maybe it's giving it a false reading. I'm not sure. But we're gonna clean this up. We're gonna put it back in. We're gonna reboot the battery. I have no idea if that's gonna work or not, but we're gonna try it. All right, so we cleaned it up. Little soft brush of carburetor cleaner. I mean, it was it was gunked up with all kinds of nasty. I don't know. But it's clean now. So we're gonna put this back in there. Try a reboot, see what happens. If not, I reckon we could take the EGR valve off and clean that up. I don't know, I know that's one of the things you should do. But anyway, it's all fancy and shiny now, let's give it a shot. Okay, so we cleaned that up. Now we're gonna tighten this up. Um, and then I disconnected the battery. Yes, there's an air horn on here. I don't know why, someone put it in when I bought it. But anyway, we disconnect the battery, which is way down there. 
let that sit for a minute. We'll replug this in and then uh, make sure the key's out. And we're gonna try a reboot and see if this is gonna do anything or not do anything, I don't know, and then we'll go from there, but. Okay, so that didn't do what we needed it to do. So the next thing we did is we took off the EGR, and as you can see in that pipe, I think you can see it from here, it is suited up with some really nasty stuff. Um, so that pipe we're gonna have to get off and clean. And then the EGR valve right here, you can see there is quite a bit of buildup of gunky, gooey. Is that a technical term? I'm not sure, but it sure is ugly. So we're gonna clean this up and we're gonna keep going all the way through this system until we figure out how and why and fix it. So I will continue the journey here. We're gonna clean this up next. Okay, so we got this all cleaned up. I'm not sure if you can see. Let me bring it over on the light. I think there's a light over it. Can you, oh yeah, you can see in there now. Got it all clean. With the help of my toothbrush. Not my toothbrush, but we got this side pretty clean. I have to touch it up with the scotch bright a little bit, but uh, seems like all the surfaces are pretty good there. And then I got all these little gaskets that go. I cleaned up all the edges and everything. They're all metal gaskets, so I'm going to reuse them. Um, I got the inside of this clean. This goes on the intake manifold. And then the next thing, we're going to try to get this pipe out of here because this pipe needs to be cleaned severely. I don't know if it's going to come out easy or not, but we go around the other side. The other side of that pipe connects over here. I took these studs off, so we're going to see. I have to put the phone down for this one, but we're going to try and get that pipe out of there and see what uh, what the soot situation looks like over here because uh, that's got to get cleaned. All right. All right, and now we got this last piece here. We got it all cleaned out real nice. Toothbrush, carburetor cleaner, all kinds of fun stuff. Let me clean the other end too. I think it's about as good as it's going to get uh, without getting carried away, but it's, it's free. It's not clogged up or anything. So let's see what else we have in this fun box of tricks. Okay, so we're reinstalling everything this is as far as i went i didn't take this whole throttle body off i don't know if that's something you're supposed to do for basic maintenance on these machines i'm learning as i go like i said before so i cleaned all of this stuff up um, i'm reusing all of the metal gaskets they were all in really good shape and they cleaned everything so I'm going to put those back on. I installed that pipe back on, which I apologize. I don't know the proper name. If you do, by all means, let me know. And um, yeah, so I'm going to go back through and just make sure everything's clean. Make sure everything's tightened back up. I was able to get this pipe out uh, just by loosening up this air cleaner type bracket that goes over the top. I just took the... Uh, there were two bolts that went down there into the block. I took those off and I was able to grab, um, grab it with my hand and pry it out to get this bar or a pipe to come out on the other side there, which made things a whole lot easier to clean um, on the bench than it did in there. So let's get it all back together. I did order on Amazon uh, the OBD2 adapter they don't actually have an obd2 port but they have this port and they have an adapter on amazon it's like 19 bucks i ordered that and uh i don't know i figure for 20 dollars it's worth the gamble to see if that's gonna give me any kind of reading or i know like on a car you got a clear code because i have a feeling that even if i put this all back together it's not going to clear the code uh so Anyway, that's where I'm at. I'll come back in a minute. Okay, so here we are. 
day two on trying to resolve this situation without succumbing to bringing it to the dealer. I don't know. Sorry. I think that's nonsense. And I'm totally anti bringing it to the dealer to fix something that's uh, easily being, should be easily repaired itself. So I have a couple of ideas that I got off of the internet and little bits and pieces of how to reset uh, the, sorry, how to reset the um, system using the onboard computer. So we're gonna give that a try, see if it works, and I will update you. Yeah, so here's how we're making out. Absolutely no luck trying to get this stop code off uh, by myself. So we took the uh, loader off, we took the flail mower off, all the other stuff kind of stripped it down because it looks like we have to bring it to the dealer because a lot of options, well, unless I can think of something in the meantime, but of course it's the weekend now and then I'll have to call. So <clears throat> this is, I guess what you call the tractor blues. <laughs> we'll be back. Hey guys. Okay. So it's about three weeks later uh, since I started this video little pause in between um, like I mentioned earlier we had no choice but to bring uh, the machine to the John Deere dealer to get the um, alarm shut off um, in the stoplight um, limp mode whatever you want to call it um, anyway so the local John Deere dealer was they were very nice on the phone when I called for service um, you know explained what was going on and I explained uh, you know what I did to the machine and it's a 2020 so 2023 now they're like it's you know the emissions is still under warranty so if you can bring the machine to the shop that would be great he says you know I could probably plug it in while you have it on the trailer and uh, if you know if it's something simple maybe you'll be on your way so I was like wow that's impressive you know I I didn't really never heard of a dealer doing something like that well when I went to the dealer the same Rob I spoke to on the other the other day was not the same Rob I spoke to this day it was the same Rob but a different personality anyway so it's been in there for a week calls me up and says that they reset the uh, light and alarm and everything is fine in other words, all of the EGR stuff that I cleaned, the sensor I put in and apparently fixed the problem, I just can't reset the alarm without the John Deere specific software. So we're on our way down. We're gonna see how it goes. We'll pick it up and then uh, I'll come back from there and we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, <laughs> so we picked up the machine. Um, I asked the service department uh, representative, I was like, so what exactly was the issue that caused the, you know, alarm to go off and all that other nonsense, which stopped me from using my tractor for two plus weeks. Uh, he's like, well, blah, 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 pretty much told me nothing other than they plugged it into the machine and they turned off the alarm and then they ran the machine and it seems fine. So basically all the stuff I showed you in the beginning of the video with the EGR and the cleaning and the sensor and all that, that was it. So I repaired the machine and they plugged it in for probably five minutes and then let it run and uh, then proceeded to charge me. Of course there's a charge even though it's warranted. $121.67 for the use of their software, basically. So that's where we're at now. <laughs> we're going to go uh, unload it, put it back together, test it out, and see. Uh, hopefully it's working right, and then uh, I'll do a little follow-up on it. All right, thanks. Okay, folks, so there's my rant. There's my story about this. I don't know. Hopefully it helps you uh, understand what... Um, goes on with that if it happens to you and what to do and uh anyway that's that 
So again, everybody, thanks for watching. Peace. Good luck.